All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So happy Thursday, um, right before the Memorial Day weekend. Um, my name is Andy Gibson. I'll, I'll go over a little bit more about uh, myself here in a couple slides, um, or actually the next slide, I think. Um, today, the, the topic for this webinar is on digital analytics architecture for publishers. Um, so <clears throat> there's a lot of different things that go into uh, a digital analytics architecture. So I'll, I'll define what that is um, here in a few slides. We'll talk through ways to um, you know, create a universal architecture across all of your different properties and platforms. Um, and so really the, the crux of this is to make sure that you're, you're using a scalable architecture um, as you are adding new platforms, as you're adding new properties. Um, and so I'll go through and explain some ways to do this. Um, and then also we'll talk about specifically um, some ways to utilize uh, Google Analytics 360's uh, better features for specific uh, specific to you guys as, as publishers. So let's hop right in. Um, so my name again is Andy Gibson. I am the head of vertical for news and media here at InfoTrust. Um, InfoTrust, we are Google Analytics certified partners. We are Google Analytics 360 resellers, uh, Google Optimized resellers, Data Studio resellers, um, and we're also Tag Manager certified partners. Um, so we really work with um, a lot of the um, products in the Google Analytics 360 suite, but we also do other things with data integrations for things like Salesforce, uh, many of your CRM platforms, uh, Eloqua, HubSpot, any of those as well. Um, so InfoTrust, uh, outside of the certifications, um, we consider ourselves web analytics consulting and a product development um, company. So we also have some uh, in-house products um, that started as in-house products and now we actually uh, sell as a, a software as a service. Um, so taginspector.com is one, and then Analyzely is another. Um, so really my, my role here at InfoTrust, we work mainly with um, our, or I work mainly with our larger publishers um, to help them uh, either migrate from a different tool over to Google Analytics 360 or essentially get more out of Google Analytics 360. Um, so the first start of this, and I'm not going to make this very, very salesy, um, but I wanted to make sure that I covered these benefits beforehand because some of these features I will be talking about later on in the presentation. Um, so just want to make sure that these are called out ahead of time so you're not getting lost. Um, in terms of um, some of the main benefits for 360, one obviously is going to be higher data collection limits. Um, so with the free version, um, you get anywhere over about 10 million. Um, that is when Google is going to um, say that you need to move up to the next tier that Google Analytics 360 and start paying. Um, with the 360 benefits, things like um, you know, 1 billion, 5 billion, all those hits, um, those are essentially collected underneath a service level agreement with Google. So you have um, guarantees on your data collection, how quickly that happens and all that stuff. So with um, the first benefit here, higher data collection limits, um, another big one's faster processing. So with the free version of Google Analytics, it can take anywhere between 24 and 48 hours for that data to populate into um, your Google Analytics reports. With 360, the SLA is for under four hours, but in uh, actuality, it's really more of an average around 15 minutes. Um, a lot of more integrations are available. Um, AdWords is always going to be a free integration, so with the, with the free product, um, but for things like DoubleClick for Publishers, which is obviously a big one for news and media companies, uh, DoubleClick Bid Manager, Campaign Manager, and also Google BigQuery, uh, those integrations are strictly for Google Analytics 360 customers. Um, we'll be talking about some custom data points here today. Um, so one thing to call out is there are higher um, limits for collecting those custom data points. So with the standard version of Google Analytics, you can uh, have up to 20 custom dimensions and 20 custom metrics um, per property. With Google Analytics 360, it's actually 10 times higher, so you have 200 custom dimensions and 200 custom metrics available. And then also uh, enterprise administration features. So that's a big one, being able to create rules for uh, email addresses that can have access to certain types of properties, being able to see when the last time someone logged in, all that stuff is um, controlled through the enterprise uh, administration feature. Um, which is not available on the standard, and then also roll-up properties, which we'll be talking about here in a second as well. Um, and so roll-up properties are a tagless way of actually rolling up specific properties in an account um, and it actually dedupes your users across those properties and some other cool stuff. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit as well. Um, so the agenda for today, uh, first we're going to start off by talking about creating a scalable digital analytics architecture. So I'll define what that means um, analytics architecture, and then I'll go through some of the ways to actually create that 
um, scalable uh, architecture. And, and that's really one of the important things. So a lot of the publishers that we work with, obviously, they, they're not having or not operating one website or one app. Um, so they, they're operating, you know, a lot of different um, websites throughout the um, country, throughout the world, or also they just have different brands. Um, and so one of the main things is being able to collect the same data points across all of those different properties. And that's, that's a really crucial thing um, for a lot of these large companies. And so that's what we'll, we'll talk about here um, at the beginning. Uh, collecting custom data points with GA360, that's another big one. So outside of just collecting, you know, your standard data points, um, I'll go through and we'll discuss um, collecting some additional things like custom dimensions, metrics, uh, content groupings, um, and so on. I'll talk a little bit about utilizing the double click for publishers and Google Analytics 360 integration. Obviously, that's a big one for publishers. Um, and so I'll focus a little bit on that towards the middle. Um, we'll talk about using Google Analytics 360 rollup properties. So that's another great one, especially for news and media companies. Uh, and then towards the end, we'll have a Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to add them into um, the GoToWebinar control panel. There's a little section for questions over there. Um, and I'll get to those at the very end. Um, so the first uh, thing we we're talking about here is creating that um, scalable digital analytics architecture. And so um, to, to actually make your um, digital analytics architecture scalable, there's a few things you need to do. Um, first, we'll define what that actually means. So essentially, when I'm talking about a digital analytics architecture, um, I'm referring to the framework for data collection, utilization, and then integration across an organization. Um, so if you think about a large publisher, obviously, you are using... Um, uh, multiple tools to collect data on your website. Um, there's probably a lot of different data points that each one of those tools needs. Um, there's data that needs to go from one tool to another, so you need to integrate those. Um, with a digital analytics architecture, um, essentially what we're talking about is creating these, um, creating a mapping essentially of the data that you're going to need on these different platforms and then within these different tools. Um, and so you're outlining essentially what those data points are and then where those data points need to go. Um, so this is a very important concept, but it also often gets overlooked within organizations. And there's a number of reasons for that, that to, to actually happen. Um, so a lot of the times when we start working with someone um, at an organization, they say, okay, well, you know, this is my first year here. Um, I don't know who set up Google Analytics or I don't know who set up Adobe. Um, I'm not really sure what types of data we're collecting. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Um, uh, you know, who, who's run into that situation before? Probably all of you. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why people are just not understanding or not following through with this digital analytics architecture concept. Um, one of the important things when you're going through this process of creating this is to actually document everything. Um, that would solve a lot of the issues that we've run into with companies um, saying what I've just said previously. You know, I don't know how it's set up. I'm not really sure what's being collected. I don't really understand what these things that are being collected mean. Um, if you have some way to document all of that, um, you know, anybody can come into the organization and say, okay, on my first day, here's what we're collecting, here's what that data means, um, here's where that data is going. All that is extremely, extremely important um, because, God forbid, somebody gets hit by a bus and that's the only person that owns Google Analytics or Adobe or whatever at your organization, you know, where are you going to go from there? So it's extremely important to um, document everything that you're doing with your digital analytics architecture. Um, one of the other important concepts to understand is a data layer. So if you use a tag management system, uh, which is essentially a way to manage all the different third-party tags that are going onto your site, um, it's important to utilize what's called a data layer. And a data layer really is nothing more than a JavaScript object. And that object is going to contain things like um, information on your users and their interactions on the site or the app, um, page structure and content, um, and much more. So really... If you're thinking about what a data layer is, it's just some type of object on your site that is collecting information on what's going on. And now that's that object, that's really going to give you um, a universal data layer, a universal area for data collection, where then you can use um, a tag management system to pull data out of that and send it to whatever tools you need. So for example, if um, you are an e-commerce website and you're collecting information on transactions, uh, Google Analytics is not the only tool that's going to want to collect information on transaction, right? You might have a transaction total, uh, which is the total revenue for your uh, for that specific transaction. I might need to send that into AdWords. I might need to send that over to Facebook. I might need to send that to Twitter. Um, any of those things, um, we can essentially create a standardized data layer, which has one 
area. So it will have a revenue total in there. And then you can essentially use Google Tag Manager or Telium or any of the tag management systems that you have to then send that data to those different tools. And so instead of the previous uh, way people were doing it is essentially you have to use the syntax for every single one of those, um, every single one of those tools. Um, so you might have, you know, a, a code for Facebook, a code for Twitter, a code for uh, Google Analytics, all that on your site. You can now use one data layer and then their tag management system all with one code to send that to whatever tools you need to. Um, and so every tag management system, and if by now you're not using a tag management system, I highly, highly suggest you start looking into this immediately. This is one of the, the huge things. Um, I, I'm not sure, I, off the top of my head, I don't even think we have a client um, that does not use a tag management system at this point. Um, but every tag management system recommends using some type of data layer. And this is just a way to standardize those data points that we were talking about. So you can standardize them across your different content platforms, organizations, all of that. Um, and so different uh, tag management systems call them different things. Um, some call them a data object, a data layer, whatever. Um, it's still the same concept. You're using essentially one JavaScript object to collect all the information um, that you'll be sending into different tools on your site or your app. So let me give an example. Um, this is an issue we run into a lot. Um, companies that uh, own and operate a lot of different um, properties across you know, different markets um, or across different countries. So you might have, and this is just a, a small example, we might have a uh, publisher that has three different sites, right? So one site um, is uh, for sports, one site is for strictly news, and one site is for um, news and sports, something like that. Essentially what we want to get to is the um, common denominators between those sites. And so creating that scalable architecture we're wanting to essentially collect the same pieces of information across all these different websites. Um, so the way that we recommend doing this and the way that a lot of companies recommend doing this is by utilizing that data layer. Um, and again, this is an example of Google uh, Tag Manager's data layer. So it, it's named a little bit differently than something like a Telium or an Insighton, uh, but it's the exact same concept. So essentially there's data points that we're gonna go through for all these different websites. And so again, this kind of goes along the lines of um, documenting everything, documenting all the data you're collecting. Let's say I've gone through the process, I've talked with our executives, I've talked with our IT team. I, we've decided essentially all the different custom data points that we wanna collect on our sites and our apps. Now, essentially the next step is then to work with the IT team to create this unified data layer where you're going to be collecting the same types of information across all of these different websites or apps. And this is crucial because one, it's gonna be clean inside your analytics tool. So in this case, we'll use Google Analytics as an example. You're gonna understand that you're collecting the same data points for site one as site two as site three. Um, also, if you're pulling this data into other tools outside of your analytics tool, let's say you're using something like a Tableau, um, you're using BigQuery, uh, you're using Spotify or any of these tools, now you actually have a common um, architecture across all these sites. So if you want to do things like create rollups in Tableau, now that you know that dimension one is going to be user ID, dimension two is going to be logged in status, dimension three is going to be day since last login. And that's really crucial if you're doing something like creating a roll up in any of these other tools. One of the issues that we've run into in the past is we'll start working with a company and they have, you know, we'll say 20 websites. Well, those 20 websites, they're collecting a multitude of different dimensions that, um, they've never actually even looked into. So we'll say something like, okay, are you collecting information on user ID? And they'll say, uh, yeah, we think so. Two out of the 20 websites might have user ID. We'll say, okay, all of your sites are news sites. They all have sections in them. Are you collecting sections? Yeah, we are um, for about 15 out of the 20. So again, you see an issue if you're trying to pull this data out into some other tool, you're trying to roll it up within Google Analytics, you're not using the same standardized dimensions, metrics, content groupings as um, you really should. And so that makes it hard to scale that across the organization. So one of the crucial things that we recommend doing is going through that process with your management team um, and your IT team of understanding what data points you need and then standardizing that across all these different websites. And the best way to do that is through something um, like a data layer. So in this example, you can see um, we have uh, similar sites. So similar sites set up um, kind of have some different um, you know, content that's going to be on those sites, but they all have concepts of user ID, logged in status, how long it's been since someone's last logged in, the sections on the site, um, subsections, content type, a date published, 
the day, month, and year publish, um, a content ID coming from the CMS system, and then a uh, platform. And that's a way to essentially identify um, the data coming out of these if you're using something like a Tableau, um, Spotfire, any of those additional tools, Data Studio. Um, and so that, that's one of the crucial things for making this scalable. Now, if we introduce a new website um, and we say, okay, it's, you know, it's very similar to these other websites we have, it's a different market or whatever, um, we already have this data layer built and architected. Now you know automatically you can go to your IT team and say, okay, here are the data points we need in the data layer, set that up, and then we'll be good to go. That's very simple to do, right? You don't have to continue to go through this process of saying, okay, uh, development team, what data... Uh, can we get uh, management team? What data do we need? Marketing team, what data do you need? We've already gone through that process. And now you can essentially utilize the data layer architecture that we've already created and introduce that to the new site or the new app. Um, so there's some benefits of the standardized data layer. And we've talked about some of these. So there's really not going to be a difference in terms of the data collection across these properties and platforms. And that makes it really, um, really beneficial when you're doing things like creating roll-up properties in Google Analytics. Um, 360, or if you're doing something outside of that in something like a Tableau, Spotfire, Data Studio. It also simplifies the data collection process for new properties, and that's what I was just alluding to. So you already know what needs to be collected. You don't have to go through that process of interviewing all the stakeholders again. Um, you're going to merely walk out to the IT team and say, hey, here's the data layer that we need. Um, go ahead and populate that on every single page of the site. Very, very easy. Um, you can also e easily manage exports and create organizational rollups through those integrations. So the, the Tableaus, the Spotfires, Domos, any of that. Um, and then also you can have less reliance on that development team. So um, if you're using a tag management system, you will actually be able to own that data collection. So once your IT team puts the tag management solution on your website, from there you have that standardized data layer. Any of those data points you can send to any other tool strictly through the interface of your tag management system. You don't have to reach out um, again to your uh, IT team and say, hey, I need the AdWords tag um, you know, added to the confirmation page or to this specific page. You can actually handle that all through your tag management system. Um, so the next section here is collecting custom data points with GA360. And again, these custom data points, those are coming from that scalable digital analytics architecture that we just talked about. Um, so again, here's our example. We have these three sites. We're collecting um, the same dimensions in that data layer across all those websites. Now, the next step would be to essentially put those into custom data points in Google Analytics. Um, and so there's multiple ways um, and multiple um, features of Google Analytics that you can use. So one is custom dimensions, and we've talked about that a little bit along with custom metrics. Um, content groupings are great, especially for publishers to understand um, like time, types of content. Um, and so really, content groupings perform ex extremely well on um, news and media sites because there's usually a pretty logical breakdown of different sections or categories on the site. So those are really great for, for high-level reporting. Um, custom events, so any type of custom user interactions on the site, you can track those. Um, user ID, that's another big one. So if you have a login capability on your site, you have a subscription model or um, just a way to essentially be a member of a site. Um, you can utilize a user ID, which tracks back to something like your CRM system, and that'll allow you to have some additional integrations, um, especially if you have something like an app, then you can track them across the app and um, the website. And then also integrations with other platforms. And so the big one is uh, double click for publishers. So we have a section on this. Um, it's really great to understand um, within Google Analytics how valuable your traffic is. So especially for news and media companies, a lot of that revenue is coming from advertising. That advertising is done through DoubleClick for Publishers. So essentially with that integration, it'll bring in all of your um, DFP data. So things like impressions, click-through rates, um, uh, trying to think of some of the other ones off the top of my head and I can't. Um, all that will actually be pulled into Google Analytics and then also married to Google Analytics data. So then you can see for a certain page on Google, uh, or a certain page on your website, how much DFP revenue was attributed to that in certain sections. And so then you can also use these custom data points. So let's say you have a custom dimension set up for something like author to collect the author of all of your different articles. You can then break down specific authors and see how much DFP revenue they're actually attributing uh, or being attributed to. So 
other areas, things like categories, content classifications, or content types. So whether video um, content versus just static article content are driving more revenue, all that stuff is doable through this integration. And then also these custom data points. Um, and so some examples here on the left, these are some of the custom dimensions we've set up in the past. So uh, nothing new from what I introduced in the data layer, things like date published, publish day, month, year, um, content type. So whether it's a video, article, link, slideshow, something like that, um, content category, content owner, content provider, content ID, all that stuff um, you can collect within that data layer and then send to Google Analytics um, for further analysis. And also that's great especially the content owner, content provider, and content ID down here. Um, we have a client that utilizes Domo, and so they're essentially rolling that up within an organization, and so they can see um, which specific content owner, um, in terms of DFP revenue, is doing the best, um, specific types of content across the organization, and so on. Um, content grouping, we talked about that, so we're actually grouping by content type, owner, and ID as well, but then also content classification. So that'll break down things like the homepage versus a sports section, local news, um, weather, any of that stuff, that's all broken down with the content groupings. Um, and then also the DFP integration up here, so that's what that looks like. Um, and so the DFP uh, integration is really valuable for publishers, obviously, as it sounds. So for um, DFP, and for those of you that don't know DFP or haven't really been um, introduced to it, it's an advertising software from Google. Um, it allows publishers essentially to sell ad inventory on their digital property, so on, on um, their websites, their mobile sites, and their mobile apps. Um, and so that, you know, that, that image down there is essentially showing you place ads through DFP. Those ads then get placed on your website. People click on those. You get paid. So the integration between GA360 and DFP uh, allows data to flow back and forth between those tools. So there's two major features of that. One is being able to share GA audiences with DFP. And what I mean by that is you can actually create segments within Google Analytics and then save that and send it to DFP where you can actually target to those specific segments. So let me give you an example. Um, within Google Analytics, we could create a segment for people that have visited in the last seven days and have spent a certain amount of time on the site. So we'll say, you know, we'll create a segment, show me the, the people that have visited in the last seven days, um, and then also um, show me the people that have spent so much time on the site. Now, with that, that'll, if I create that segment in GA, that'll segment Google Analytics reports um, just for that segment. But what I can also do is then, through this integration, send that segment to uh, Google uh, Double Click for Publishers, and then I can use that as an audience to actually market to and target with advertising. So if you have um, advertisers that are looking for really engaged, uh, people that are really engaged on your site or with certain content on your site, you can create that audience and send it to the FP, and then you can actually have them um, uh, target those people with their ads. Um, the other uh, integration I was talking about was actually pushing DFP data into Google Analytics 360 reports. And so that's pulling in um, data like impressions, click-through rates, um, all of that. All that can be pulled into um, Google Analytics for additional insights. So that first feature, uh, pushing data from GA to DFP, um, essentially what we're doing is um, the Google audience uh, that you're creating is a, is a segment. You mark it as an audience. And that's a list of cookies or mobile advertising IDs. And they represent a group of those users you want to re-engage with. And so, again, that would be an example of people that have visited in the last seven days um, and uh, have spent a certain amount of time on your site, have engaged with your site for a certain amount of time. Um, so there are multiple Google tools that use those GA audiences. One is AdWords, so you can do remarketing with that. So we could do retargeting or remarketing across the Internet for those types of people. But then we can also use DFP to actually show ads on our site to those to those people as well. Um, so there's a couple more, there's a couple benefits to, to this first um, this this first uh, integration style. Um, so that's pushing GA data into DFP. One is you can show more personalized, relevant ads. Um, how, how many of you have been on a website and you know you're looking at these ads and like these ads are not relevant at all to me? Uh, I have no interest in getting a cat. Why are you showing me cat food? Something like that. Um, with this, you can actually um, create those audiences to make those ads more relevant. Um, 
The more relevant ads are, the more likely they are to get clicked on. There's a lot of stats out there on the internet about that. Um, so this is one of those major benefits is, is being able to show more personalized relevant ads. Um, and you can also target users based on their activity on your site. Um, so one of um, the things I always run into is if you are a member of a site, um, there's a lot of times those, those sites actually don't remove you from their advertising for signing up for the site. So I'll give you an example. There's a local um, website that I'm actually a member of. It's just a local news site. So I'll log in. You know, I'm on the site looking through some stuff, and it'll have an ad, just a house ad, um, placed on the right that says something like sign up and get blah, 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 or you know, sign up for these features or something like that. Um, well, I'm already a member, so why are you showing me this ad? With this, you could actually remove those specific people through utilizing something like a customer dimension to say that I am already a member. I can remove those people from these specific ads, so now I'm not targeting people that are already uh, members of the site. So that, that's a really powerful one, especially for um, uh, in-house ads to make sure that you're targeting the right people and you're not essentially pissing off your subscribers or people that are already members on that site. Um, and so we talked about target users based on the attributes as well. So here's an example. Um, and I'm not actually a member of this site, WCPO, but that is a local site. Um, but you can see here, we'll, we'll imagine that I'm logged in, I'm a member, and you see this summer is better with insiders. Become an insider and get two free tickets to this riverbend, to this concert. Um, if I'm a member, why are you showing me this ad? Right? And so with this DFP integration, we can essentially remove people um, from, these, uh, from these ads just by looking to see if they're a member of our site or not. If they are, um, we won't show them these ads. Um, and so this is what the process of building an audience uh, list looks like from scratch. So it looks just like it would um, creating a segment in Google Analytics. So you essentially create that segment. Um, here you can see days since last session, we have less than or equal to seven. Um, and then also if I wanted to do some type of engagement, I could put a session duration or number of pages visited, something like that. And once we click apply, we can actually send it back into that DFP, um, that DFP account. And within that account, then I can choose this audience and then show ads to that. You can also oh, convert any um, Google Analytics segment that you have already created into an audience list to send a DFP. Um, so these are all just examples of some um, custom segments that we've built in the past. So I could find any of these, click build audience, and then send it into DFP, pretty much the same um, process on the previous screen. Um, the really beneficial, and, and this is the, the one we typically hear publishers being the most excited about, is pushing that DFP data into Google Analytics. Um, so instead of simply knowing something like your world news section has the most page views on your site, uh, you can see which sections or which pages have the most impressions, clicks, uh, the highest click-through rate, and also are driving the most ad revenue. And so that's all made possible by that GA360 and DFP um, integration. And then also those tags, um, the Google Analytics tag and the DFP tags, being able to communicate with each other um, to use a single identifier so that it can match up all of this data within Google Analytics for reporting. So one benefit, uh, and this is really the main benefit, is a more unified view of ad revenue and user behavior. And this is to, to help improve your monetization strategy. Um, so I've worked with many publishers that uh, at the time couldn't really tell me which sections of their site were driving the most ad revenue, um, which types of content were driving the most ad revenue, and that's a problem, right? Um, you want to understand that so you can constantly make optimizations to your site or to your app. Um, when the integration has been completed, essentially, you'll notice that there's a new section of reports um, under the behavior section in Google Analytics called Publisher. So there are three standard reports that will be um, available to you. So there's an overview report, a publisher pages report, and publisher referrals report. So these reports are going to be automatically generated, uh, and you don't have to do any type of custom tracking for these, these reports to work. They're, they're done automatically once you integrate DFP and GA. Um, they're going to help you understand which traffic sources and which specific pages on your site are driving the most ad revenue. Um, outside, though, of the standard reports, you also have the ability to create custom reports with those custom data points that we talked about to then better understand how your site and content is performing. So, for example, um, you can utilize Google Analytics 360's custom tracking features like custom dimensions and content groupings. Um, and then you can understand which content categories, types of content, sections of your site, authors, content published on specific dates, all of those, you can see how they're driving the most ad revenue and the most clicks. 
Um, and so these custom data points then, the custom dimensions, content groupings, all of that, those need to be set up first before you actually do the integration to, to get that information. But again, that goes into what we talked about first was creating that uh, analytics architecture that's scalable across the organization. So once you have that architecture built in, you can then create these reports that are showing you, um, you know, the, the top revenue by section, the top revenue by content type, by author, all of that. Um, let's see here. Let's think through a couple of examples here. Um, so let's think of, um, we'll use the New York Times as an example. So for a newspaper site like New York Times, they have many different sections of their site. So they have the homepage, uh, world news, U.S. news, politics, health, tech, etc. Um, so if the New York Times is utilizing something like a content grouping, um, to group together like content, they can then look at publisher revenue by each section. So questions they could ask themselves, um, does the world news section generate more revenue than U.S. news? Um, any of these questions, th those are all answerable through this integration and then collecting those custom data, data points. Let's look at another example here. Um, so let's think of a online uh, news site that's strictly online, like Mashable. Um, they have many different types of content that appear on the site. So they have things like stories, they have stories that have videos, they have slideshows, they have sponsored content. Um, if they're using custom data points like custom dimensions or content groupings to track those different types of content, then they can actually segment those and look at which ones are driving the most revenue. So some questions they could ask are stories with videos driving more revenue than stories without videos. That's pretty interesting, right? Um, so with that integration, those custom data points, they're able to answer those questions. Um, one of our publishing uh, clients actually uses content syndication um, across all of their sites. So they might have a, um, a piece show up on uh, x.com, but then it also shows up on y.com and z.com. Um, so uh, they're actually tracking content ID, they're tracking content owner for each of those pieces. They actually use a data visualization tool um, and Google Analytics 360's API, and then they actually can pull out content ID and content owner along with all those DFP metrics um, to see which pieces of content are driving the most revenue across all of their websites. So for instance, a, a story might show up on five different sites. They can see specifically which um, story is doing the best on which sites, but also they can roll that up at the top level and say, okay, we have um, 10,000 stories at any given time. Which stories are driving the most ad revenue across all of our websites? So pretty valuable. Um, one of the other huge things with Google Analytics 360 are um, roll-up properties. So essentially what a roll-up property is, it's a tagless way to roll up properties within the same account. So when I mean tagless, I mean you don't have to actually create a new Google Analytics property. You don't have to add a new Google Analytics tag to all your sites. It's kind of like an enterprise um, tag. This way, you don't have to actually do anything with the code. It's all done through the interface. Um, so some of those uh, benefits, there's multiple data sources that you can roll up. So you can actually include web, app, and measurement protocol hits in the same property. Um, and that's good for things like if you have um, markets that you want to roll up. So you want to look at um, users across the given market. Well, we have a uh, Roku app. We have a um, mobile app. We have a website. You can actually roll those all up into the same to, to understand the users across those markets. Um, session merging. So if users are visiting multiple properties in the same rollup. So for example, if you have... Um, if you have three sites in the same market and those are rolled up, then it'll actually dedupe those sessions um, across that rollup to, to keep them um, uh, to keep them kind of considered as one one session across that entire platform. Also, each hit counts less. So with Google Analytics 360, you're, you're billed based on the number of hits you have monthly. Um, Prior to the, the true rollup properties that you can create in Google Analytics, you had to essentially create a new Google Analytics property and put that tag on every single one of the sites that you wanted to roll up, where that would essentially double all of your hits, right? So you have an additional tag that's showing up on your five sites that doubles the hits for those five sites. With rollup properties in Google Analytics, the actual feature, those hits only count as half a hit within that rollup property. So it's not actually double. Um, it's a little bit less than that, and so that's actually better for you in terms of uh, monthly hits uh, per month, which are going to keep your cost down as much as possible. Then also you can re enable remarketing audiences based on that roll-up property. So you can actually remarket to people um, based on any type of session or actions on any of those source properties in the roll-up. So that's valuable as well. 
Um, so some caveats with that, um, the properties you have to roll up or you wish to roll up, they have to be within the same Google Analytics account. Um, Google actually has a tool now where you can actually move properties to different accounts, so that, that can help you out here. Um, all those properties to roll up, they all have to be enabled with Google Analytics 360. You can't use this with any standard property. Um, Google Analytics 360 support actually has to initially create the rollup property for you, and so your Google Analytics 360 reseller is going to be the ones that actually manage this process for you. They'll reach out to Google, Google will create it, and then your GA360 reseller will set that up for you um, in terms of which properties to roll up. Um, you then select those properties in the, in the interface that you want to roll up into that uh, roll up property, and then you go through the process of mapping your custom dimensions, metrics, um, and content groupings if you have those set up into that roll up property so that it's a one to one um, basis with all the other. Um, properties in that account. And then also you can go through the process of building out any necessary reports or dashboards. So there's a few standard reports that are available once you create a roller property, but then you can also create um, custom reports for things like you utilizing the DFP revenue. So you can see essentially the top revenue across all of your different sites. So let's say I own 20 sites across the United States. Um, if I have a roller property, I can essentially look at those 20 sites and which ones are driving the most revenue through that integration with um, DFP and then also the roll-up property. Um, a few reasons you should be using roll-up properties, especially if you're a news and media company. One, it's much easier to compare properties against each other. Um, and so again, going back to the that DFP metric, you can actually compare DFP revenue across all of those properties. But then also you can compare top line metrics like visits, users, sessions, all of that as well. So you can actually compare these um, properties against each other for things like uh, across markets, across platforms, uh, across brands, and also across countries. So there's really um, a lot of different ways that you can utilize roll-up reports. Um, for uh, media companies, normally it's going to be markets and platforms, but if you operate uh, com companies or if you operate properties in different countries, that's also um, a possibility as well. And then we've gone over this, Google handles the heavy lifting. So there's no code updates required. You don't have to do any type of export or dedupe work in another tool. Um, all of this is gonna be done through the, the actual Google Analytics um, interface and then their, their servers. They're gonna handle all that stuff for you. So you can also easily connect those, um, the, this roll-up property with additional tools like BigQuery, Tableau, Data Studio, Domo, et cetera, for advanced visualizations. And that way you're only co connecting to one specific property um, in those tools. You don't have to connect to your 20 different properties separately. Um, so if you think about something like Tableau, it'll ask you, you know, which account uh, and which property do you want to co connect to? You only have to connect to the one, the roll up, and then you get all this data without having to connect to, to 20 of those um, and go through that process. So a couple of use cases here, we've gone over these a little bit, um, but one could be a brand comparison. So you might have um, a roll up for brand A versus brand B versus brand C. So then you can see, you know, if you have three websites for each brand, then you're looking at it in a roll up that way. So you can see things like the total number of users, um, page views, sessions across all these brands. If you're importing DFP metric, again, you can compare those um, by brand. Uh, platform comparison, so if you might have a roll-up for your websites, a roll-up for your mobile websites, a roll-up for your mobile apps, all that's comparable as two. Um, so looking at things like users across those, DFB revenue again, um, all great examples. Markets, um, another way, so you have uh, a bunch of different local markets you're in, you can compare those markets together, same idea. And then you can also have a global roll-up, which is essentially rolling up all the different websites that you own. So if you have you know, 50 websites that you're operating um, in the US or internationally, you can roll all those up in one to just get those top level metrics without having to um, either do it manually in Google Analytics or use some other tool um, like a Tableau to, to do that as well. Um, and this is just showing you the feature of what it actually looks like in Google Analytics. Um, so there's a section in your property settings for roll-up management. And you'll see here all the different properties that you can actually roll up. And obviously, these aren't real properties. I've changed the name. Um, but this is essentially what it looks like in GA. And then an example report. So this is one of the standard reports that becomes available once you create that roll up. And so you can see sources, uh, source property display name will essentially give you the property name of whatever one is rolled up. So I've changed these, obviously. But you can look at things like users, sessions, bounce rate, all that. Um, across those different properties that you have rolled up. And again, for DFP metrics, you can create a custom report for this where you're actually looking at 
um, DFP revenue, impressions, clicks, all of that across these source uh, display properties as well, which is extremely valuable. Um, and then one quick plug. Um, so Data Studio is a uh, fairly new tool from Google for data visualization. One of the nice things about it, um, you can, as I was mentioning about connecting to rollup properties, you can connect to a rollup property um, and get all that data within, within one uh, dashboard. So um, the visualizations are much better in Google Data Studio than they would be in GA. Um, one of the reasons for that is because it's uh, highly customizable, so you can add things to reports like um, your company's logo, your client's logo, date ranges, um, you can put text in there, all that stuff. It's really customizable. Um, change the, the template color, all that stuff. Whereas in Google Analytics, what you see is what you get essentially. There's no way to change colors, add images, anything like that. Also, you can use multiple data sources. Um, so for this example, I'm using multiple rollup properties. So this client um, example has uh, a rollup for all of their websites, all their mobile websites, and then all of their mobile apps. So at a high level, we're looking at sessions, page views, and users across those three, um, across those three different platforms. Um, mentioned this, you can add your company and agency branding. Um, and then you can also share these dashboards with anybody that has a Google account without actually having, without actually having to add them to Google Analytics or for uh, having them actually log into Google Analytics, which is, for some people, is a hassle. Not really sure why, because it's pretty easy. Um, but with this way, you can sim simply send them a um, link, and then they open up the link, and they're looking at the report. Um, you can also add additional non-Google Analytics uh, data sources to the dashboard as well. So for things like AdWords, DoubleClick, um, any type of data from Google Sheets, you can upload data from a CSV. Um, all that data is uh, able to be uploaded into Data Studio as well. Um, and again, so for an example, um, Media Dashboard here, we're looking at three different rollup properties for the different uh, three different platforms that they have. And over here, we're actually printing out and showing you which are the top five um, properties for each of the main sites, mobile apps, and mobile web. So fairly basic. Just wanted to show you a little bit example what um, that could do for you. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover here today. Um, so you can see, as I've gone through the presentation, we started out talking about a scalable architecture. Um, from there, we talked about utilizing custom data points for additional types of reporting and visualization. And so it kind of builds off of itself, right? Um, so, you know, you, you work with your IT team, your um, marketing team, your advertising team, your management team to collect all of that, um, those custom data points that you need. You standardize that within a data layer, and then all that is available uh, for you to use with, uh, if it's the Google Analytics 360 features like rollup properties, um, or the DFP integration, or if it's with another tool pulling data out, you have all that data standardized, and it makes it very simple to then pull out uh, and, and use. Um, so that's all I had planned for today. Um, hope that was interesting to you guys. If you have additional questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. My email is agibson at infotrustllc.com. Happy to walk you through uh, more examples of this or, or talk through what you're currently doing. Um, doesn't look like we had any questions today. So if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, we'll be in touch with you. We'll, we'll follow up with a rec uh, recording of this webinar and then also the, the slides from this as well. So thanks for joining today. Hope you have a good uh, rest of your Thursday. Enjoy Memorial Day weekend and uh, hope to talk soon.